Are you interested in going the remote route, but you just don't know what modality is best for you? Well, stick around because in the following video, I'm going to give you 14 pros and cons to VRI and OPR in hopes of helping your decision. Tune in as Interpret Your World's co-founder, Juan Prieto, talks about the highlights of his workday as a professional medical video remote interpreter. If you are aspiring to learn something new and gain insight into what the world of medical interpretation is really like, then you've come to the right place. Follow along as Juan talks not only about his success, but the daily challenges he has to overcome to become a better interpreter each and every day. This is Unwind Sessions with Juan Prieto. Hello guys, how's everybody doing? I hope everybody had a very, very nice weekend. And remember that we are still accepting comments to MIP 21 for a chance to win exclusive links to MIP 22 and send us your recorded interpretation for feedback. So take advantage of that and get your feedback. So all you have to do is go over to MIP 21, drop a comment. We really don't care what it says as long as you comment. Then once that video reaches 100 likes, we're gonna be picking two people at random that commented. That way we can send them exclusive links to MIP 22 and give them a chance to record their, their interpretations, send them over to us and get your feedback. So. Let's do this guys. Um, if everything goes well with this, we have some ideas, we're still working on them. Uh, but this is going to be like the first step. If this goes good, feedback goes good, expect some very, very good news in the future from Interpret Your World. So today is Monday, August 30th, 2021. Today I took a total of 25 sessions. And um, there was a question from Jaima. Uh, she asked, what makes a session ordinary? Today there were no highlights. And let me tell you, um, whenever there are no highlights how come there's no highlights right well when i first started interpret well not interpret your world when i first started online sessions i started online sessions as a way to humanize the uh the clouded persona that we have as an interpreter right i can tell you that before becoming an interpreter i thought i had to memorize a dictionary i had all of these beliefs about interpreters they were just on another level and some of them are don't get me wrong some interpreters are on just an, on a whole new level that um mere mortals are will never achieve all right uh, but of course that comes from years and years and years of training and practice. Uh, so I decided that I was going to do online sessions because I wanted to show all of the interpreters or, or aspiring interpreters, I should say, that this is just humans. Interpreters make mistakes like everyone else. There's going to be situations that are just completely out of your... Uh, of your possibilities to do anything about them. Uh, we all have difficulties with difficult accents. We all don't know certain words. So there's all of these things that can go wrong during an interpretation session. And I just wanted to put that into perspective as me as an interpreter to show everyone that is aspiring to be an interpreter that you don't need to be perfect to be an interpreter. You can just, as you are human and imperfect and you're allowed to make mistakes just as long as you learn from them and you make them right and uh, you don't uh, fall uh, into the same mistake uh, more than two times, right? Uh, maybe you made the mistake one time, you learn from it, then uh, you go ahead and then the second time you remember, you, you do it again. But then the third time, 
is not gonna happen because you're already ready so there's all kinds of things that can go wrong during a, a session an interpretation session and that, that was what I expected and of course um, I thought I was a genius I was like I'm a genius I mean there's never a dull day right but uh, I realized that yeah there's never a dull day because of course I didn't remember the dull days right they were just dull days they just passed by and I didn't care about them so I didn't notice the dull days but when I started doing on one sessions I noticed that there are some dull days like today for example uh, and uh, well it just starts to get hard uh, and then uh, my million dollar idea all of a sudden just collapsed but thankfully uh from the help of every of you uh of every one of you i've been having some great great ideas like for example what i'm gonna talk about today so it's been great even though there are some days where there are no highlights just uh regular old interpretation sessions um there is still uh uh that uh what do you say that um that purpose right of um even telling you like dull days right because uh, dull days even though uh they don't help you grow as an interpreter because there's no challenge in those days it's still good to know that there are some days that not not every day is going to be a challenge not every day is going to be a headache you know um there's going to be some days that are just going to be really boring all right so that's what I was trying to do with these sessions. Of course, um, it's impossible, right? Like they, like today. So Jaima, that is a very, very good question. What makes a session ordinary, right? How do you, how do I know there will not be any highlights today? Um, first of all, for the most part, if the session is medical, if all of the sessions are medical, for example, today I did not take a single customer service session so they were all medical that's number one number two there was no new terminology i did not learn any new words today uh um um oh, damn i forgot our uh, characteristic i guess or uh requirement number uh, three, there were no unusual requests. There's no like uh, interpreter, interpret for this lady, but not for the daughter. Interpreter, uh, only interpret this, but not that. Interpreter, can you interpret my uh, podcast? Uh, interpreter, can you do some simultaneous? Uh, you know, things like that. Nothing that uh, just take me out of my comfort zone. There's no hard accents. There were no hard accents today. Nothing that I couldn't understand. Everything was good. No technical difficulties either, except um, probably some calls that they were just ghost calls, you know. But other than that, I mean, no. Um, I mean, there's ghost calls too as well. I've never mentioned that. Uh, sometimes you get into a session and then there's no one on the other side. Today I had like three of them. So yeah, you get those as well. But I mean, like telling you that, I don't think it'll make you a better interpreter, right? Or it'll make this job seem more human. So uh, no hard accents, no problem solving. There was no need for me to actually um go out of my way to make sure that the interpretation was solid understood um or having to think uh how to say a certain thing so the person can understand me you know just things like that uh i didn't forget any words my interpretations were very good today and everything was just go all interpreting i mean uh, nothing else uh just interpreting so just to recall medical sessions no new terminology no unusual requests no hard accents no problem solving no forgetting words and just good old interpreting so that is what makes a session ordinary for me or a day uh ordinary uh and like i told you i thought when i first started doing on one sessions i thought there were never gonna be uh, boring days, but boy was I wrong. Uh, 
so today was one of them so Jaima thank you very much um, now you guys already know what makes an ordinary session and uh, now for the main part of today's video so the question comes from Marcelo Andre Cortez Cepeda he asks if I can do pros and cons for OPI and VRI I want to uh, before I get into it I want to let you guys know that I am doing this video from my personal point of view I did not do any outside research for this video because I only wanted to give my my um, uh, my views of what makes uh, the pros and cons for OPI and VRI um, I don't know I think in the future I will probably make another one um, how like um, the pros and cons of OPI and VRI but not from my personal view not from my in not from the interpreter side but from the client side you know uh, I think that is just to put it in perspective you know not only take my side of the story but the side of the story of the people that are actually using the service so I think um, I'll probably do that tomorrow I don't know I'll probably get it this week hopefully but that does require a little bit of research so we'll see if I can do it tomorrow or we'll see what day I can get it but pretty sure I'm gonna be doing it this week all right so this is my personal pros and cons for uh, OPI let's start with OPI all right so pro number one is for OPI is that you get to work from home right whenever uh, they told me that I would be working from home I was like <gasps> I'm sold what I gotta do I, don't, I didn't even care what I needed to do I just wanted to work from home I mean there's no uh, because I was catching the bus when I was doing this so there was no buses to catch right no rainy day sitting out there in the bus stop uh, Sometimes I used to catch a ride with a co-worker, so no waiting for your co-worker. And if your co-worker gets sick, it just, like, throws your whole uh, plan out the window, right? So working from home, no wasting gas, no nothing. And um, it's very late. It's very late. I'm sorry. It's very hard to be late for work if you're already at home. And you work there right so there's a lot lots of benefits from working from home and I definitely love it I honestly I don't want to go back ever to having to work at a certain place well this is a certain place right but out of my house and I don't work from home right now I'm not working from home I'm working at my grandma's house I live uh, if I go on my bike it's like around 10 minutes away so it's good if I go on a car it's like about five minutes away so I don't live that far. I used to live like a hundred meters from here though. Uh, so working from home is awesome. And of course I'm not working from home now, but in like in the future, I wanna go back to working from home, like from my home, not having to come to my grandma's home to work. But uh, because of my situation, it's hard right now. But uh, you're not here to for me to explain that, right? Another pro of OPI is that clothes and shower are optional. This is honest, honest. Like, I remember I didn't even used to shave or shower whenever I worked as a, as an OPI. Of course I showered because my wife would be like, oh, you stink, you gotta get a shower now. But for the most part, I didn't even shave my head. Uh, I shave it every two days now. I, I It was sloppy, man. and. Sometimes I would just work in my underwear because I had a, an office where I would be working as an OPI. So I would just be there chilling in my underwear. Um, so clothes and shower are optional, right? Uh, another pro from OPI is just that you can make arrangements to go to the bathroom while working. And I used to like that because I used to think that I was getting paid to pee or to poop. Of course, um, it's not acceptable, it's not the best, and if you can avoid it, do it, but for the most part, it'll mean that you're gonna get less pay, so don't don't say that I told you this, but uh, I used to, when I worked in OPI, when I 
I had like the longest cable. I brought me the longest Ethernet cable that I could find. It was like about 30, me 30 meters long, I believe it was. And uh, I would just hook it up to my laptop because I was taking phone calls from a laptop. But when I was taking phone calls from a phone, I would just hook it up. And then uh, uh, if I had to go to the bathroom, I would just run to the bathroom and then I would mute it whenever I had to do my needs, you know, so people couldn't hear what was going on. And then I would just hold it and then I just talk and then I would just mute it and then I just go. So that was awesome. Um, of course, you can't do that with BRI anymore. So something to keep in mind. Um, going to the bathroom is much, much easier and you can get paid while you're doing it. All right, another thing is that depending with the company, you can work through a landline, a phone, or a, or a copper internet line. And that is very important because for the most part, uh, very rarely will a place not have a line line or a copper internet. So working OPI is going to have a wider range of places where you can actually work out of. Another thing is that with OPI, you can just work from any quiet room in the house. It doesn't matter. You can work from your bathroom, like I said. You can work from your bed, laying down in your bed, right? Uh, another thing is that you can work from any place as long as it meets the requirements for service like a phone line or internet. So if the place that you're going to has a phone line or an internet or internet, uh, you can go to that place without a problem. Uh, for example, when I used to live in uh, the state capital in Chihuahua, I would come visit my grandma over here for some time and we could we could, would come visit to my hometown. And when we came to visit, I would just carry my laptop with me. I knew I had good internet and I would just hook up and I would just do my time my shift and that was that I was done with my shift and I wasn't even living in in um, I wasn't even taken in my house right I was in a completely different city so that was awesome I I really love that uh, another thing is that if you get frustrated you can mute the phone and you can yell right like ah or oh my god why isn't this person understanding me or whatever you want right uh, or you could be like rolling your eyes right like oh I can't believe I had to interpret this I can't believe the lady said and now I got interpreted. All right, another thing is that you can stand up, you can walk, you can even exercise. I remember I used to do squats when I was in OPI. Um, and you don't need to be sitting down, you can be laying down, you can be in any position. Uh, that is awesome. That is one of the awesome things of OPI. Another thing is that uh, you can wake up like five minutes before your shift and you can just place your headset on, turn on the computer and you're set. There's nothing else to getting ready if that is what you wish. Another thing is that uh, you can work laying down in bed like I already mentioned. Um, another really good thing about OPI is that when you're holding, you can, you're pretty much ready to do anything anything just a law as long as is within company policy right you can't so, uh, you, so i'm gonna hold i'm gonna play my playstation right i'm gonna hold i'm gonna be looking at my phone no those are things that you cannot do um but you can read a book you can pick up a puzzle you can uh, um i don't know there's a lot of things that you can do uh, imagination is gonna be your limit there uh, another, uh, another pro is that in the winter, you can wear five jackets, two blankets, and some mittens to be warm, and it doesn't matter. You are going to be interpreting like a king. Uh, another thing is that in the summer, you can work naked if you so wish to, so you can keep cool, right? And for the last pro for OPI is that you don't get to see all of the gore and suffering, right? You don't get to see anything, anything at all. So that's a pr that can be a pro sometime. Uh, now let's get started with the con. So the con says that social psychology says that if a person cannot see you, there is a higher chance of them being, no. 
social psychology says that if a person is not able to see you, there is a higher chance that they will be an asshole. So remember that. That is social psychology talking there. If a person cannot see your face, if it's an impersonal interaction, there's a higher probability that they are going to be rude mofos. So that's something to think about. All right, and uh, of course, another con is that there is no ability to see anything, anything of what's going on. Um, no visual clues at all, just voice. The another thing is that uh, the internet can only be wired. Uh, they, the company that I used to work for, I don't know if there's other companies. I know there's other companies that are using cell phones now, but uh, I don't know if they have to be. Well, how would you plug in a cell phone to the internet, right? That doesn't make sense. Um, so, for the most part, if they are OPI, they're gonna need wired internet only or some sort of. Uh, landline right uh, I don't know how many companies implement the um, satellite internet and all of that stuff or uh, antenna internet but to my knowledge they don't accept that I don't know if that's true or not another uh, uh, con is that you need to work in a quiet environment I've heard of stories people getting fired because there's dogs barking on the background people yelling in the background, lots of background noise. So you will require a quiet environment. Environment. Uh, an obvious con to this is that it's usually less pay than VRI. Uh, one con that I would say is big is that you don't get to see the smiles and joy of the people that you're working with. Another thing is that people just leave you hanging on the phone and uh, they don't tell you anything. They just go and they forget about you. So unless the phone is on speaker, uh, no one's going to hear you. So you can be yelling on to the top of your lungs. Is there anybody there? Do you still require my assistance? And they're not going to hear you. Uh, sometimes they do. And then uh, uh, you can, do I keep on holding? Do I hang up? What do I do? and they just tell you but sometimes they don't and it's hard to know what to do right because they didn't tell you what to do uh they usually have uh, policies though that you need to follow rules within your uh the company that you work for so that's a little bit of a clue but it's hard sometimes uh another thing is that you get the occasional gossip of how vri is better um I've heard nurses and just people uh, talking about when, when they have you on the phone as an interpreter, they talk about how a VRI is much better than an OPI because you can see the interpreters and they're all great. So that's something to keep in mind. Another thing is that there is a higher chance of falling asleep during a session. Um, believe me <laughs> because there, there's nothing there like you know um, y like you know that in a VRI you have to be good right you have to be there you have to be alert but uh, on um, on an OPI you're only listening so everything else just takes that alertness from you and it, if, if you had a bad night you didn't sleep it's pretty hard to stay awake uh, during a OPI uh, another thing is that it's a higher chance of being distracted during the session, right? Nobody's looking at you, so you can have all kinds of things in front of you that may distract you from the interpretation. Another thing is that this is usually, I put this in a con because I don't like customer service sessions, but some of you might find it as a pro. So, uh, but this is usually entry level and filled with customer service sessions. Of course, that's not true for every company, but for the most part, it is. And for the last con is that OPI sessions, they feel more impersonal, you know, because it's only a voice. You don't get to hear the people. You don't get to see their faces, suffering, joy, whatever. So I would say that's a, a con. All right, so those are all the pros and cons of OPI, my personal pros and cons. And now the pros and cons from VRI. So pro number one is the same, work from home. And I've already stated the wonders of working from home. 
so I'm not gonna explain them again. Another pro is that you get to see the people you interpret for. Like honestly, the first time that I had a VRI session, it was literally eye-opening, right? Because uh, my eyes were closing uh, an OPI, right? But during a VRI, I was able to open my eyes. I was able to see the hospitals, the people that I work for. And it's just a very, very, very nice feeling that phase away with time but a nice feeling nonetheless <laughs> all right and uh, um another thing is that you get to visually learn and see everything that's going on like for example you get to see the tools you hear the dog barking in the background that's my grandma's dog he doesn't she doesn't like me never liked me and i've been working here for a long time now uh, but anyways uh, you get to see what's going on. So all of the procedures and everything, not all of them, right? But some of them you get to see, you get to learn. And I'm a very visual learner. So I get to see and it just sticks better up here. That way for the next sessions, you're already ready. Another thing is that you get to pick on visual, pick up on visual clues, right? Like if a person makes a weird face, like, you know, like, oh, this person's not understanding what I'm saying, right? Or if they get angry, you're like, ooh. Uh, she's about to go off on the doctor right or whatever so that's very very nice as well or they can show you things right like uh, oh I don't know what that is oh it's this oh I, ex I know exactly what that is all right um, another pro is that you need to keep a proper posture and look good in camera all the time why do I put this as a pro because look at me I mean I I, I never wear wore dress shirts and ties I you que paso estoy ocupado cuál es ahí voy espérame hold on guys sorry All right, so sorry about that, guys. So apparently my wife left her keys inside the house. So she just came to get them. All right, so where was I? Looks like this is gonna be a long video. Uh, oh yeah, uh, you need to keep a proper posture and look good in camera all the time. I put this as a, as a pro because I mean, I never wore dress shirts for, uh, for work or a tie. It makes me feel good looking in camera like that. It honestly boosts my mood and of course, having a good posture as well and I, I always knew I had a bad posture people would always tell me I had a bad posture but it was not until I looked at myself in front of a camera eight hours a day that I and I felt the struggles of being able to keep a good posture that I realized maybe I should work on my posture and uh, ever since I joined this company the VRI company I have been improving my posture. It is much, much, much better. People just see me and they tell me that I have much better posture than I used to. So that is something that makes me feel great, makes me look great, right? And it just boosts my confidence. So that is definitely a big, big uh, pro with that one. Another uh, pro is that people are nicer when they can see whom they are speaking with. And that is just an effect of social psychology. Uh, another thing is that clothes below the waistline are optional. As you are able to see here, or I don't know if you're able to see. Yeah, huh? I'm wearing shorts and I'm wearing my good old sandals. And that's the way that I work. I mean, that's wonderful. Uh, business on top. Uh, leisure on the bottom right and that is awesome i mean of course it was better when i would uh, work in my underwear but 
uh, being able to, I, I can still work in my underwear, but I'm in my grandma's house, right? How would I look uh, walking around my underwear in my grandma's house? So um, that is still good, even though uh, we still have to look good up here we can have leisure on the bottom. So that is awesome. You get to save on pants and socks, laundry stuff, and shoes. All right, and another pro is that it's usually higher pay than OPI. And of course, a very, very big pro is that you get to see the smiles and the joy on people when uh, you get to see all the good news, the good stuff, right? There's no substitute for that honestly uh, I really love it whenever you help someone and then you see that joyful smile on their face and there's not a price to that something you don't get with OPI um, another thing uh, if they leave you hanging for the most part the OPI has a speaker on it the, the VRI I'm sorry has a speaker on the device so if they leave you hanging, you can, you see nobody in the room, you think you're hanging, you can just yell, you're like, hello, is there anybody there? Is there anybody there? Can anyone hear me? If you don't get an answer, then you can just hang up or do whatever, uh, uh, whatever is the policy for your company, right? And, uh, yeah, that, that, and that they, for the most part, always, someone always hears you because it's, it's kind of loud. Uh, so that's a, a good thing about VRI as well. Another thing is that you can uh, uh, type on the screen for clients to see, right? If, for example, they're not hearing you, um, and you can type like instructions to so check your mic. Uh, uh, is the mic uh, turned on? Or am I muted? Uh, you can troubleshoot through the screen because you can put letters on the screen. So that is always awesome another thing is that it makes you be more alert right because big brother might be watching you right you don't want to get caught uh by your supervisor or by quality agent right poking your boogers in a session right so for the most part or i can only speak for myself but that just makes me be good right be professional be alert and uh, another pro for this is that uh, it's mostly medical. In my case, I get most medical sessions, honestly. Um, if you make me pick between medical or just customer service or school or stuff like that, 100% medical. I love medical. All right, uh, another pro is that seeing a face on the screen just makes the interaction more human. Like, uh, I don't know, I think that it also has to do with social psychology, right? Uh, you see a face uh, and uh, it like pers gets, gives a personal touch to the session, right? So it like makes you strive to give that person um, a better, better service i guess so that is all of the con uh, all of the prawns all of the prawns <laughs> all of the pros for vri all right now let's get to the cons um one of the cons is that people get to see your weird faces when nature calls and believe me it will happen like uh for example, all of a sudden you get you're in a session and you get a stomach discomfort, and then like something twisting inside, like the alien is about to burst from your stomach, right? People are gonna see that, and uh, well, you're gonna be embarrassed, and it really sucks, and they're gonna see you sweating and stuff. So um, there's gonna be times when people are gonna see you in a bad moment, all right? And uh, you have another con is that you have to wait for the call to be over or transfer it so you can go to the bathroom. When the urge hits, there's no, I'm making it to the bathroom. No, you have to hold on until you, the call ends or one of your coworkers is nice enough to take the call from you. Um, and sometimes it can take a while. So you're just going to be there like holding it bad. So that's one thing that I don't like about VRI. Another thing is that this is my emergency pee bottle. Um, 
Of course, if you're male, you will be lucky enough to have one of these. If not, you probably won't. Uh, but why do I say that this is a con? Because, well, uh, if you really need to use it, you're probably gonna be in the middle of a session. So uh, trying to pee while looking at someone in the eyes and interpreting at the same time can be a little bit of a challenge. There are just so many variables that can go wrong. So always something to keep in mind whenever you have to do that is Murphy's Law. All right. So what does Murphy's Law say? If anything can go wrong, it will. So you just have to take all of the precautions to make sure that you can do the deed. And I'm only talking about number one, you nasties. <laughs> I don't know what I'm thinking number two. All right. So that's only for number one. Uh, just be careful, guys. Um, I haven't used it. I don't know when was the last time I used it. I know I've used it this year, though. But, um, I mean, just keep it there as a backup because sometimes it's horrible. And it'll save your life, but use it very sparingly and don't use it if you don't have to. <laughs> All right. Another con is that you must have fast internet, fast internet that uh, will accept video. It'll have good video. They, I think in uh, my company, they need... Uh, uh, 10 megabytes download, 5 megabytes on upload, and I know that's not fast, but they don't accept copper cable or satellite, so it needs to be, um, it needs to be not copper, uh, what is it, fibra optica, um, fiberglass or something like that, I don't know what it's called in English, can you believe that? Uh, in Spanish, it's called fibra optica, uh, optic fibers or something, fiberglass. I'm pretty sure it's fiberglass. I'm not sure though, um, but whatever. You need to have that type of internet here, and uh, uh, that's why I'm working at my grandma's house because there's all, in my town, there's only like downtown and just like the main roads that go to the main cities, like the uh, the main roads that lead to the exits to the main cities are the only ones that have a great internet and downtown Anything else in this city will either have to be Copper or satellite or antenna. That's it. That's why I'm waking out of my grandma's house because This is the only place where they have internet. I used to work like a hundred feet from a hundred meters from here and uh, that place had a uh, great internet as well but i had to go and i had to make some deals with the phone company uh well not make some deals from the phone company but it was more that my mom knew a person from the phone company so they put great internet there but nobody in that block except for me had great internet so i got lucky so that just like limits the regions for when you can work from as a, a VRI. Uh, so another con is that you have to keep a proper posture and look good in camera all the time. I know I put this as a pro, but this can also be a con because being in a proper posture and uh, having to look good all the time can be exhausting. And sometimes if you've had a bad day and then you have to look good on camera and just have a proper posture, be professional, it, can be exhausting all right um another con is that you need a quiet environment and an exclusive room and setup to work in like you need a uh, good lighting a background you need to set up the camera to uh look good right at a good height and everything so all of those things are things that were not provided by my company I had to set it up as they told me, but they didn't give me any lights. They didn't give me, the only thing they gave me was this background. And that was it. Everything else I had to do on my own. I had to set up the background on my own. Uh, so I had to set up the lighting and then they didn't like the lighting. Like for example, this shadow that you see in my videos, you, I cannot have these uh, shadows at work. So it is a little bit difficult uh not impossible but yeah it's a little bit of a pain in the ass 
uh another thing is because of the setup you can only work at an authorized office like it's not like oh i'm gonna go to cancun and i'm gonna be working there uh as a vri and then with uh, i can stay there for a month and then i can come back and be at my work and no no that's not happening uh as far as i know i don't know about any other companies but from my work if you want to change your office you have to call uh and let them know like two weeks ahead of time that you're going to be changing and you cannot change your office again in six weeks so that is also a very bad con for vri uh all right another thing is that you need to have a poker face all the time like for example if someone says something that is funny but it's not a funny situation right uh, and uh, you're gonna be like forcing those lips to not crack a smile and uh, or if something makes you angry you're gonna have to have your poker face all the time right you you always have to have a professional demeanor and um Sometimes it's very hard to forget that we're working VRI, so having a poker face all the time sucks. Uh, of course, um, another thing about the poker face is that, of course, like um, expressions like a smile, politeness, all of that thing are great things just to get uh, a bad situation good right uh, which you don't have in opi that's something that i didn't mention uh another thing is that you're gonna need to buy light bulbs because uh, one of those light bulbs is gonna go out sometime and it's gonna go out in the middle of your shift if you're lucky it'll be during a break or during in the middle of a session but if you're not that thing's gonna be dark and you have to replace it right away so you're gonna have to have light bulbs and a um a light bulb to uh, a replacement light bulb another thing is that of course there is a dress code of course the dress code is only from the waist up right but you do need to follow that dress code another thing is that you need to pay for cooling and heating to look good in camera because of course as a vri you're not going to be able to work naked to keep cool in the summer right and they're not gonna let you put on your blankets your hat your uh 10 jackets so you can be warm right and save some uh, money from the heating yeah it's not gonna happen you this is it and uh, the most they let you put on is a coat nothing on top not no scarves or anything and of course in the summer this is it uh so that is pretty bad as well uh, another con is that for vri you get called a robot you get called a machine you get called an interpreter thingy so um just because you're inside of a machine your human self gets completely thrown out the window and uh, they treat you just like a machine sometimes another thing is that you have to get ready to go to work uh and that sucks uh, because opposed to opi you know in opi you can just wake up and if your computer's right next to you you wake up you put on your headset and that's it yeah over here no you have to uh, just make sure that you don't look bad on camera right you need to make sure that your tie is well your shirt is lined up right uh uh your makeup is well for ladies well guys too right whatever everything just needs to be perfect right because you need a good a good image of yourself and of your company of course all right so pretty long video but i think i covered everything like i told you i'm gonna be doing another one but this time from the perspective of the clients why what are the pros and cons for clients for OPI and VRI. So stay tuned for that one. That is going to be pretty much it for me today. Please leave your questions in your com in your comments. All right, please leave your questions in your comments. Please leave your questions on the comments and I will answer some of them on the next 
session. Remember that if anything is time sensitive, let me know. That way I can get to it right away. Remember that I'll be here every Monday through Friday. And also remember to get your comments on MIP21 so you can get your feedback. And what happened to that? Because I use this for a mouse pad, so it's getting all weird and stuff. So get your feedback. Get your feedback and help us take the first step into a new, a new project. Because, yeah, once we give you that feedback, we're testing something new as well. So something to look forward to. Help us out, guys. Also, remember that we have a Patreon page for as little as just $1 of your support. You help to motivate us to create much more content. And you have access to all of the medical practice videos, ad-free, scripts, answer sheets, vocabulary lists, and much more content. And most importantly, you will forever win a place inside of our heart. Now here we love all of our Patreons, we love everyone that has bought us a coffee, we love all of our subscribers, and we love you that is gotten to the end of this video. So thank you so much for watching, please like and subscribe if you haven't done so for much more content, and don't forget to share. Happy interpreting, goodbye. Thanks for listening to this episode of Unwind Sessions. Make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. And if you learned something new today, it'd be great if you left us a review. You can also visit us on patreon.com slash interpret your world or visit our website, interpretyourworld.com. Unwind Sessions. If you like this video, don't forget to smash that like button. Also, share this video with other beginner interpreters or anyone who can benefit from this information. Thank you all so much for all the support you guys have given us. This means the world to us. Don't forget, we also have social media. We have a Facebook group and a Facebook page. We also have an Instagram and the one I love the most, TikTok. We just recently got a buying a coffee and also, if you guys didn't already know, we do have a Patreon account. If you guys would like to support us a little more, we'd love to have you guys over there. And as always, I will be posting all the links to these pages down below in the description box. Thanks for watching!